Hey you guys, I know. I am eight minutes late. And yes, I am. I was trying to tag people on the video and uh I tagged people and then um I hit exit. <laughs> so yeah, I didn't tag people. I was trying. But we're gonna get started because yeah, we're running late. And, um, I have, of course, disappointment in my voice <laughs> because, you know, you guys are, you guys are saying, yes, I'm going to do it, Sylvia. This is what I asked for. This is what I wanted. And yeah, you guys are not doing those assignments, but I'm going to keep doing what I said I was going to do. And I said for four weeks, I'm going to come on and I am going to uh help you guys with your author promos because this is what you guys have been asking for you guys have been saying sylvia i i need to know exactly how to do this how to set things up how to make things go like they're supposed to good morning doris good morning michael thank you for joining you're in the tag list doris i swear you're <laughs> you're in the tag list that I was trying to do, which was why I was late, because I was trying to do the tag list. Oh, uh, yeah, it was not going well. So, but you guys have asked for this. You guys have asked for uh, me to find a way, Sylvia, that I can easily start to understand how to work to be an author. So... I said for four weeks I'm going to come on I'm literally dedicating myself to do this and I usually don't do like picks like stick to schedules I don't usually stick to schedules other than second Saturday you guys second Saturday is like set in stone but other than that I usually do not unless it's like for a podcast or something else and then I was a little bit late because I did have to find my uh my my favorite glasses again again so if you've been with us through week one and week two I'm gonna quickly recap it and kind of give you an idea of where we are you can always go to the assignments or Good go morning. back to the past uh, to the past ones to see uh, where we've what we've done I'm trying to get to my notes that's what I'm trying to do and it's not working I do like that you guys did go back and make notes of everything I do like that um, there's my notes and I have notes actually linked for this time as well okay so the basis of this whole challenge is to build or strengthen your author platform create readership and build search engine optimization and to sell books so that is why every week we have done different challenges to help us do all this. So in week one, if you haven't been here, like I said, you can go and look at all the videos that are saved in our group here. And I'm going to take those videos then and then pretty much make a lesson out of it because the group actually gives me the ability to make lessons out of it. So uh, in week one, we for it's Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays that you have to turn in your lessons, and you can turn in, you know, the link or tag me to show that you've did it, and you can still catch up. You know, you, if you don't do it, then you can still catch up. So the first time we did, we did a Monday blog uh, hashtag because those are really popular out there where people go and search and use the Monday blog hashtag. And then that was a week challenge of why I wrote my book or why, why do I write? I gave you two things. Because even if you are an author and you haven't came out with books, you can still participate in the author promo challenge. Um, you would just have to tailor it. Wednesday, it was to create a promotional graphic. And you could use bookbrush.com or canva.com, C-A-N-V-A.com, in order to create a, a promo. Now, I stop posting your book covers please because that's not a promo a promo is when you are making a graphic about your book a marketing a promotional graphic 
and it has to have a link in it or at least a catchy saying or you know something to make the reader click through or want to know more about the book not just yeah the book cover is the bomb but stop please stop posting your book cover it has to be a promo graphic or a writer graphic in order for it to qualify and then you also uh, have to ha on Friday you had to grab an interview or interview someone either on your uh, social platform or your website platform so in week two week two you had to Monday it was a two-parter uh, work on your bio it had to be in third person uh, and for extra credit you had to post your updated by the by you had to go and update your social media uh, bios so that was kind of like an internal uh, <laughs> one for me because I know you guys have not probably updated your bio in a while on the majority of your social media platforms I could probably go and hit someone's LinkedIn right now and see that you guys have not done anything so number um, number two for Monday was be was to find or get a free item and I showed you guys examples and like I said you can go through the videos Wednesday was also a two-parter it was a book or writer graphic promo and then someone asked me well why do I need all these graphics and everything well, if you have Instagram, you constantly need graphics. Um, if you have social media, you, you constantly need graphics. You Graphics are your way of enticing that reader to you or your book in some kind of way. And you need a lot of them. I don't know if you know this. You can't just keep putting your book cover out there over and over and over again, which I, I've seen people do. Like, literally, I know someone who has put the same book cover and the same one promo graphic out for the last three years they use the same thing they vary either the book cover or the graphic in some kind of way and they've been doing this over and over and I do not want you guys to be that person so that's why I'm, I'm encouraging you to make a writer graphic or a book graphic in order to 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 the promotional graphic in order to uh, put in your library of graphics because you're gonna make more but you really do need this and everything um, and then of course Wednesday was the blog post writer Wednesday blog post and that topic was why did you what did you work on this year to better your literary career and you could tag me Friday was also a two-parter it was to gather links and get all the direct links to your website and to your product page and your book page you also had to work on getting all your social media links. A lot of you guys don't know your social media links. You don't know your book links. Um, you don't know how to get to them because not everybody has an Amazon. Uh, there are still nooks out there. A lot of people who still have nooks out there, then you're not giving them that Barnes and Nobles nooks. You are missing out on sales. Like Tanita Johnson likes to say, stop leaving money on the table you know and get out there and make sure you have links your book page should have your your Barnes and Nobles your Coble your Google your i iBooks um, they should have those links on there um, and on top of that for your reviewers you should have your book bulb you should have your Goodreads page maybe even a library thing page library.com thing where librarians get together in their own social media like you should have those um, there and on top of that not only should you have your Amazon page but you should also claim you should also claim your author page on Amazon that's very important and I know a lot of you guys have not done that and I left links down there related links in there so go back to that uh, that video and you'll have a link where you can go on Motown Writers Network to collect the assignments and how to do them. So now we are on work week three and I'm going to catch up with you guys because you guys probably have been leaving notes by now. So let's see. Okay. Hi, Wayne. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hey. Hey. Okay. So, okay. I'm making sure that I answer everybody's question. Everybody. Hi, Stacy. How are you? Gosh. 
Wow, hi, how are you? Um, I'm making sure I'm, I'm seeing everybody. Okay, so we're gonna get started on number three. And that, I know what that means. That means that you need to go grab your notebook and your calendar, or your calendar and or. <laughs> I have a suggestion. Pick a person that you like in the book world. Be a picture of the writer's area for the day. Oh. Oh, okay. I have like little notes of what I want you guys to do, but I'm not going to do those. I'm going to do those maybe week four. Something fun. Week three is work. Week three is work. So, like I said, this whole thing is to make sure that you guys understand how to work as an author. Because you didn't publish a book or you're not publishing a book to, to just as a hobby. You're publishing a book to make money. So the steps that we're doing is literally... I'm looking for my book. Okay. I'm li like to literally uh, sell books. Bottom line, you would like to sell books and get more readership. And we all cannot touch a degree. You can give me a thumbs up. You can give me a heart all day. You know, tell me like that's what, yeah, that's what you would love to do because that's very important. So let's go with Monday. Monday, 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 Monday. Let me put this over here so I can see what I am doing okay so Monday it's more of a target reader day so Monday is target your targeting readers and on this is something simple it is a two-parter for Monday but Monday you are going to describe your perfect reader and in that regards let me get my notes it's a big book <laughs> Um, in that regards, you're going to describe the kind of reader or readers you would love to, to be reading your book. Because remember, your book is not for everybody. And if you think your book is for everybody, that's when you don't understand what's going on. You want to describe who your perfect reader or readers are. So write a short paragraph um, that describes this this person or this core group of readers that who they are what they do the um, minorities majorities whatever if they work full-time um, if they're young they go to school um, and and the benefits that they get from reading your book so you can understand why this, you, you can understand why this is the perfect reader. Because when somebody gets something, it has to be some kind of benefits. What do you mean by no glitches, Arlene? I hope you guys can hear me. <laughs> oh, I do see a little bit of glitch. I do. You're right. You're right. I do see Wayne. I do see like, yeah, because I saw it jump just a little. So that means like everybody's getting on. <laughs> it is a lot of people in a room, but uh, I'll go a little slower to make sure. <laughs> it is Sunday morning. Everybody got to go to church. So they listened to their church service online. Um, so what this, what uh, targeting your reader or describing your perfect reader is going to do and how this is helpful is because it's going to help you create ads later on and how to target those ads towards the specific readers that you need. And good morning, Arlene. Um, so that's why you are doing this. You are targeting your reader. Um, I believe we did like a little bit of something towards this and it'll help you out. But targeting your reader helps you kind of see, well, this is the kind of person I want reading my book. And when you have to do those Amazon ads, Facebook ads, Instagram ads, Spotify ads whatever and you can create free ads on Spotify just in case you didn't know that tidbit but you are able to target that specific reader or core readers that that can help plus this helps you write better tweets towards that reader it helps you write better marketing material it helps you put together your promo graphic a lot better because you understand well hey I'm targeting women and it's kind of sensual so let me use pink or purple you know to 
you know arouse the senses because you want to make sure the color is on point you want you don't want to have a, a, a sensual romance and you just straight up use green that's not a good thing because it doesn't create that feeling of sensuality so you understand you want to know who your reader is so you understand like that really does help in the whole realm of it um, when you know who you're talking to you know how to get to them and then it makes your job a little easier and it's less it makes your your job as an author less stressful of okay what do I say to them because you know who you're talking to so that is your assignment your first assignment on Monday is targeting your reader so your second assignment is actually a big assignment as well unfortunately so I hope you have a lot of paper because we are about to go to work about to go to work that's our that's our next week assignment right there do, 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 do. and that's our Friday assignment okay so our two-part assignment our second assignment is uh, to work on your website or to create a website now for 20 years yeah for 20 years <laughs> I to remember how long I've been in this business <laughs> for 20 years I have little no I'll even say 19 because I had the baby in 2001 and that's when I started it so for 19 years I have been going back and forth with you guys about creating and maintaining a website it is vitally important for you to have a home for yourself and control that home so you can create great search engine optimization. People always ask me, well, Sylvia, how do you get so high in the ranks? Or, you know, when you do a Google on me, you can see that it, it produced so many results. And that is because I link everything back to sylviahubbard.com. That means wherever my footprint has been, wherever I have gone, that, that the, what I call them, spiders out on on the internet I was about to say something funny but the spiders out on the internet are always trying to link everyone back to where they should be so that way if, if you want to find them then they can say well this is where they live so constantly they are making connections everyone has to connect in the computer's mind so if they don't know where you are then they can't start a foundation and create good search engine optimization and you can't create good search engine optimization which is why you always need a home well in that home you do have to tell people what your address is because you want to people to know well if if I'm like Zane and I'm over hanging with Zane, then yeah, I want her readers to know, but I don't want to be out there. Hey, my address is I love her. my address is sillyalbert.com all the time. Well, you have to be in those areas where, okay, hey, I, I created this free short story or I have this and you can link here. You can link to this PDF. You can go to my contact page. You can do this and blah, blah, blah to create a home and search engine optimization and then the little spiders will come and say oh look at all the zane stuff and hey this person also left their address somewhere and this person is now connected to zane well look at there now i'm getting search engine optimization and zane's readers are saying hey now that i read all of zane's let me go check out this one because now i'm looking for more things like zane and this person is like Zane. Kind of like that. But you do need a home. No matter what you say or how you put it. Stop putting your home on other people's streets. Per se, Facebook pages or um, 
Twitter pages or Instagram pages or YouTube pages. Those are other people's streets. You need your own street. You know, you need your own address. Go buy your own domain and lead it towards there. So then you can build it up and you can have what you need. Now, in order to create or update, if you have a website, yay, thank you. But now, when was the last time you updated that website? And I really want you guys to answer that. When was the last time you really went through and revamped and updated your website? And this is why I put this assignment at the beginning of the week, because this literally might take up your whole entire week. So, um... You need to go in there and you need to update. So if you're new to it or you're trying to revamp it and say, Sylvia, let me start from scratch. Let's just say, let's start with four pages. Your four pages should consist of a home or slash blog page, about page, product slash service page, and a contact page. So start with those four pages to work with so you won't be overwhelmed and you won't confuse your reader. Number one, let's have a navigational bar so we know where we are and it's easy to find. I can't stand going to somebody's website and wondering how do I get back home or how do I find other pages on the site. So you want to have those four pages and you want to make sure you have these certain elements inside this website. You want to have a newsletter, social media, uh, social media links because you already worked on them so you already know what they are and you've already claimed those pages and everything so you have your social media links or icons or favicons uh, sharing elements and forms those are four elements that you do need so if you're using wordpress.com or oh you did tear down oh wait hold on. so if you were at wordpress.com or org where you can have a lot of control of your site and you get great search engine optimization that's really the only one i choose there is a learning curve i'm sorry about that but there is a learning curve with it but it does help with search engine optimization you can also use Shopify, Square, and some even use Wix, but the only reason I don't propose Wix is because the search engine optimization isn't as abundant and you have to pay for a lot of the search engine optimization tools that you need. Um, so it isn't as prevalent. So Wayne, good morning, Mary. Wayne said, I tore down my old website and tried to put a new one together. It's been six months and it still isn't finished. It never looks right to me. Um, I'm sorry to bug you, Wayne, and you know I'm going to bother you, but it ain't never going to be perfect. So why don't you concentrate on those four websites, and maybe I'll come in in September and we can do like a, a website overview and see what we can do to fix that. So give me a lots of thumbs up if you would like me to do that. We can do like a website so other people can all go to the website and see what we're working on. We can do it. I better write that down. You know I got to do that. <laughs> you know I got to do that. My husband made breakfast this morning. And it's sitting here getting cold. So I hope you guys feel. You guys feel guilty. For allowing my breakfast to get cold. So I have to write that down. If Wayne agrees then we can do. Oh you said okay. Um, we'll do a website overview. I got some happy planner stickers. They are just the cutest. They are the cutest. <laughs> so we'll do a Wayne Bibbs website overview. Putting it in my September dates. Uh, and these are some bomb stickers. Like they stick everywhere. Okay, so I'm putting this in my thing so we can do that. Let me take this. We'll make a date for that. We got a date, Wayne. Okay, so create a website. <laughs> Set up a, on there. So on the home page, or you can make this a separate page, a, fix, a fifth page. But on the home page or a separate page, add a blog. Now, I know you guys are saying, oh my God, that means I got to start blogging. Yes, you need to start blogging because you need search engine optimization. Remember we talked about where to hide a dead body? 
We talked about where to hide your dead body. We are not trying to get on the third page of Google. No, we're not. So, and we have blog posts, remember? We already got two. You set them up already, right? Winka, winka, winka. So, you're going to have blog posts, and I'm going to probably continue sending out suggestions. Now, Denise Bryson has been charged with sending out questions to you guys all the time of to get you guys to talk. So you guys can take those questions and actually use them for your blog post as well. So you guys have given me great answers to those questions that Denise throws out occasionally. You can actually take your answers and make it into a blog post as well, which I have done. And I realized that at the beginning because I used to be on other people's like website and they would ask questions and I'd get in there and I'd be like, oh yeah, this happened to me a long time ago. And it'd be two, three paragraphs and I'd be like, you know what, let me put this on my own blog post. And I would, I would take my comments, wait a couple of weeks and then make that same post on my website and draw people in there and they'd start talking about their own. So, hey, use it. Use me. Use those questions Denise throws out there to you to create better. You can either take the questions and then do drafts to keep you on check. And we're going to talk about that at the end. We are going to talk about, um, I do have it, so we're going to talk about how to make time as an author because a lot of people have set up. So you're going to set up a blog on your site. You can do provide uh, behind the scenes as an author, your hobbies, um, your working spaces, your, you know, th there's different things to blog about. And like I said, I am going to um, give you guys a lot of like questions. I've given you guys already a lot of questions to make sure. Um, somebody asked me what's a cheat thing that I do. And actually, I'm going to show you. These are called morning meeting chips. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of these, but they actually are morning meeting chips. And um, in some companies, they encourage discussions and they get these morning meeting chips. So every day I just reach in or I get a, a handful of chips and then I go ahead and talk about that. Literally. That's what I do. And I change it to like a writer or author perspective. And then I send those questions to Denise and then she puts them in the thing to make sure you guys answer. So that's basically my cheat. <laughs> so you're going to be doing that. And that's why you need that newsletter subscription because you want your readers to know about it and update it so they can come and find it. That's what that newsletter thing is for. Did I skip something? Hmm. Oh, hold on. I did. I, oh, I skipped one. Okay. Also, for your website, you're going to be making sure you link to your all your published books. And like I said, make sure on your product page, you link to all your Barnes & Nobles, Amazon, Kobo, Google Play, and iBooks, your iBooks. Um, if you sell books exclusively on your site, make sure you put a commerce where they can buy exclusively from you. And don't just have the book that they exclusively can buy from you. Do like reader packages or do uh, signed copies with with other stuff that can go with it. Do bundles to make it worth their while of why they should buy from you. Plus, you have to keep your prices the same as you would on Amazon because Amazon likes to go through and find lower prices and they will cut your book down if you sell your book cheaper on on your site than you do Amazon so that's why you have to put a little bit special stuff there because like oh the book is autographed or the book comes with an addendum or a, a Bible of the series or it comes with an extra short story or something that's why this is this price and different from what's on Amazon so I'm gonna tell you that so make sure you link it also have a excerpt that they can read of that book then that can be like a PDF they can download um, or pop-up screen if you know how to do that um, make sure they have an excerpt of the book a cover of the copy and um, any reviews if you want to put any reviews on there that's nice okay so build your mailing list and we'll talk about that next week
making a note. We're going to skip that part. Mailing list next week. We're going to talk about that. Because you guys do talk about that. And I'm going to tell you a secret. Mailing lists are power. Mailing lists are money. I love my mailing list because it does bring me back joy. It's kind of like getting an Amazon box every day. When people open up those, those emails and see them. and That brings me a lot of joy. So, yes. You want to make sure that you do have a mailing list on there. Because we're going to be teaching about how to build mailing lists as well. Um, da, 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 da. when you set up your mailing list, if you can uh, have a autoresponder, now I know that sounds kind of difficult, but a lot of times they have a thank you page. So once you they get the they sign up for the mailing list, there's always a way to put in an autoresponder and say, hey, thank you for signing up, and here is a free book. Or the thing so remember the free online item that we talked about like yet last week you can actually put the link of it there if you made a P you can make a PDF of it and then put the link there and say hey here's your free book see 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 that's why you needed that free item so you can't be jumping out of order you got to be doing week one week two week three because these come into play once we're here see now you're clicking see it's clicking so claim your make sure you're claiming your pages and put all those pages on your website because you want to make your home your 24 7 center of how people can contact you how they can know about all the stuff you have and everything like that so make sure you are having those uh, claim pages on there as well so that's pretty much it for the website and everything but yes please put it together on your contact page make sure you have if you don't want to put your email address out there that's why I said make sure forms are available so you can have forms and people are able to contact you there are times when I want to do interviews with people and I've gone to their website and there's no way to contact them no way to contact them at all um, they even have their blog where they don't people can't leave comments at all so I find that really strange but yeah and they'll say and then when I ask them about it they say well you can leave me a DM on my Twitter or Instagram and I'm like I don't want to slide in your DM I want to literally send you something that because I don't know what your email is I want to send you something through your email well I get that I get notified of my DMs and I just sometimes some matters I don't feel comfortable DMing I don't know. I feel like, you know, I'm part of a Lizzo song. <laughs> so, yeah. Make sure they can contact you, please. Okay. So, we're going to write to number, to Wednesday. We are now, we're just on Wednesday. Good Lord. That was a lot. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. So, on Wednesday, we do another blog post and a graphic. Your blog post, are you ready? So your title of your blog post will be editing. Do you love it or hate it? That is the title of your blog post. And of course there will be notes of course later on if you don't get all this, but editing, do you love it or hate it? And even, even if it's self editing yourself and how you get stuck. And I know all of you do because I do it too. And how do you prevent yourself from getting stuck? I've often turned the TV off or I'll put music on to distract myself that I'm just a writer now, not an editor. Or I've done, yeah, other things. So that'll be a fun thing to write. Um, and you are going to work on getting a feature on a blog post. Now I know. You're getting a little scared right now because you're like, oh my gosh, Sylvia, wow, that's that's hard. But I am going to give you a link right now as we are talking. And it is a Google Doc. If you don't have Google, I'm sorry. <laughs> but it's actually a Google Doc. I just put it in comments. So it's a Google Doc where you can find bloggers to interview authors 
give me a thumbs up or tell me you like that because it's actually a live Google Doc and this author literally updates this. Now some of them are old and some of them are new. Um, she does like go through and tries to update this as much as possible but it is a free one. And it has pretty much almost like about 60 bloggers who do it and you can literally go to it when you open it up in your Google Doc. You can hit file and make a copy and then it makes it down it downloads to your drive or you can keep this link and it'll like stay live so you can do that so you're welcome you're welcome <laughs> so you are on Wednesday going to find someone to interview you do a feature on you or review your book you can ask them those three things so you're going to get on someone else's blog. You don't have to do it by that date. But you should schedule out for that date to send out a note or letter. And personally, to those blog bloggers, see how you can get on their site to get interviewed. They usually have submission standards and things like that. Make it personable. Don't send a mass email to people. Please make it personable and say, hello there. Emily my name is blah blah and I am a romance suspense author and I would love to be featured on your website please tell me details about how to do it I just wrote up your letter no excuse you're welcome <laughs> okay so now we are on who did an approval you go Wayne look at you on top of stuff look at you <laughs> Okay, so on Friday, on Friday, you are going to create a plan to reach your readers. So part of that plan, and we're going to do another create your plan to reach your readers next week as well. So this is uh, kind of like part A of how to reach your readers. I would like you to write 10 things you will do by the end of the year to reach your reader so whether you're an author or writer right now you should have at least 10 ideas of how you are able to right now with what you have I don't care if you have 10 cents in your bank account there is some way you can reach your readers and don't say I'm gonna take the 10 bloggers off of that list and send a, a letter out to them and that's my 10 ways no, it has to be 10 different ways. You can take what we've done and I've suggested, or you can go and look at what other people are doing and saying, hey, I can do that too by the end of this year. So 10, 10 ways of how you are going to reach your readers. And that's it. That's all the assignments. And I know you're like, that's not just it. That's a lot of stuff to do, but... Those are your assignments to do for Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So to quickly recap, quickly, 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 because we still have one more thing to talk about. One, targeting your readers. Monday is targeting your readers. Describe your perfect reader. And you're also going to work on your website. And if you guys, once you do it, please post your links. You know, or if you have trouble, contact me and say, Hey, Sylvia, how do I do this? I want to do this on my website. Contact me and let me know. You know, that, that this is what trouble you're having. I am blocking this time away, these four weeks away to help you guys. So use me. You, you guys got to use me and stuff. So. Writers Wednesday on Wednesday, you're going to do a blog post, uh, tag it Writers Wednesday, and another blog post and a graphic. Blog post will be editing, love it or hate it. Um, and two parter, you're going to get your blog featured somewhere by using that link. Ba ba ba. Friday, create a plan to reach your readers, and you're going to find 10 ways to reach your readers. We're going to have that another, we're going to have that next week as well. Bun is going to be doing something else on uh, creating a plan to reach your readers because eventually we're going to be putting together a business plan. So by the end of this year, you're going to have a set stone plan to say this is how 
every day I'm going to be trying to reach my readers in some kind of way. So we're going to try to at least have a lot of different ways you are going to have to, you're going to be doing stuff in reaching your readers. So with that, I want to do one more thing and I want to talk about, somebody asked, um, how do I prioritize, well, how do I make time to be an author? Um, if you don't know, I'm a mom, even though two of mine are already grown, but I'm also a wife and a sister and a daughter, so I have responsibilities to my fa my family and my friends, but I also still work full time because I'm trying to hoard money to re like really retire and I want to retire the way I want to retire. So I'm trying to build up my savings, buy my stocks and bonds and stuff like that. So I still actually work full time if you guys didn't know as, um, what do I do? I work full time for Little Caesars in Detroit headquarters as an IT representative and I help them keep their computers on in the store. That's what I do. And I'm able to work at home now. Yay. That's I was going to say yay COVID, but that would be bad to say. <laughs> but yeah, that's what I do. I actually work from home and I'm able to do uh, work from here so it's pretty cool actually I have if you ever see when I'm looking out to the side like that I'm looking at my uh, personal laptop and above my personal laptop on a stand I have a secondary screen and it's up here at the top where I have a bigger screen up here so I have two screens here but on this side of my desk because I have of course a L shaped desk because yeah I'm a lot of work I have, uh, this is my work area. This is, you know, my, my, I like to say, <laughs> um, the COVID, yay, COVID didn't work. <laughs> um, right here on this side, I have my work area and I have actually my work laptop computer down here and another, third, another screen. So I have like four screens plus I have a tablet right here in my face between the two monitors when I do my zoom and then because I do zoom calls all the time with people and behind that it, I have a Kindle because I'm often listening to audiobooks or I'm seeing something that's on prime and it's just easier to do I know that sounds like a lot of work sounds like a lot of work I have a lamp on this side and I have a lamp on this side um, I keep my mic here and everything so I said all of that not only do I have a plug in the wall but I also have like various batteries as well so I have sunlight batteries that keep charge all day and this actually like absorbs the Sun and stays charged when I put it in my window and then I connect my phone to it which gets a quick charge to it um so I said all of that to say this is how I do an, I, I become an author, how I stay motivated as an author, because there are things I have to do as, a, as you know, I'm still running the organization. I still have to market and promote and do things to make money, to level us off, to make sure we can run for the 20 years we've been running. You know, there's still bills to be paid and things like that. I have systems in place, and we'll get to that in just a second. So I have like, uh, and it's an alliteration of P. So I start with, of course, every day I wake up, I pray. Um, because I know it's a lot to do every day. And I usually literally just pray, like, let me just get through this day. And the day is going to be good. Whatever. Eh, put it in your hands. So that I kind of put that as a zero item. I don't put that as a number one item. I put that as a zero item because it's, it should be relevant to me. But number one, I prioritize everything. I prioritize and I put the hardest things that I have to do for my day first. Because I get those out the way. And a lot of people find that strange. But I actually do. I prioritize the hardest things first and I try to get them out the way as fast as I can. Sometimes I am. I do avoid stuff and I do procrastinate. That's my favorite thing. It's in my blood. 
my family all does it we all procrastinate but um i have been known to do a little procrastination but uh <laughs> I prioritize and I do try to do the hard things first in my life so if I have something big to do I try to put it that's why I actually did schedule these at nine o'clock because sometimes I get off of work literally at 6 30 in the morning yes I did get off at 6 30 in the morning today and I'd like say okay I need a quick nap and then I get up and I do this this work for you guys so all throughout the week I plan and prioritize like okay make sure I have this all together make sure I have you guys links and everything like that and then even after I get off of here I am going to have to put together the post and make sure all of this gets to everywhere it needs to be so I prioritize by doing the hardest things first and uh, the next thing that I do I'm trying to pull my notes over uh, okay there it is uh, keeping a calendar keeping a calendar is so important and not just a paper calendar that I have but I also keep a digital calendar as well those are very important of keeping calendars um, I have various calendars for everything that I do and I was actually doing a podcast this week uh, with someone and I, I have uh, different colored calendars so my husband and I uh, we have he he knows my Google Calendar schedule so he knows my literary schedule and then I have a personal schedule and that I mean we literally have to keep a plan of okay make sure that we have a date night you know and that we have uh, we're doing things or we're going to appointments together um, we still have household things to do so we literally he puts it in my calendar literally on my phone I wake up every day and my calendar it's posted in the top corner and I can see what I need to do I also have what's called a mind calendar because Sylvia needs a, needs a second and third brain for some reason <laughs> in order to function and I know you guys are saying like oh my gosh Sylvia how do you keep up with everything that's going on blah 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 well I I have actually a second and third brain which is literally on my phone so it keeps track of make sure I take my supplements every day because I still have to do things as a regular person um, take my supplements every day make sure I'm, I'm checking things around the house because if you guys don't know I'm I am trying to become a professional homesteader I've always been a homesteader I've always had three months of stuff in my house but now that COVID's hit this is kind of like fun for me like oh my god now I gotta make sure my house is on point and I gotta keep up with the stock and I gotta I'm even doing gardening as you guys can see so now that's my new hobby now and man it's a lot to keep up I literally have a grow journal of what I'm going to what I'm planting now what I'm gonna be planting next year when to pick the plants and everything like that that's that's crazy that's but I have a mind calendar and this helps me to keep track of all the little things that I have to keep up all the time on a daily basis and literally I make up a, a note of it I also have an Amazon Alexa <laughs> if you want to know if you really want to know so Amazon Alexa every day helps me to keep track of stuff so I'll say give me a reminder at four o'clock I have to do this and I can actually stand there in front of her at like six in the morning and say Alexa remind me at seven o'clock to do this remind me at nine o'clock to do this and literally she will she'll find me somewhere around the house and remind me <laughs> just really crazy but I love it so that's where my second and third brain comes in because when I am around here I know that I need to be doing things like that yes gardening like in real dirt you are so funny I think and I'm trying to start to learn hydroponics too so in the winter time because I have like a warming mat I had bought it for my dog well it was the kids dog but I was gonna let her use it but then I never took it out the box and it's been sitting in there so I actually and I'm getting my grow lights I told my husband for my birthday because you guys September is my birthday month I will send my PayPal and Vimo and my Cash App if you guys are interested in, you know, making me feel 
you know, rain on me or something. But anyways, so I do have second and third brains. Um, and that's how I have them. I'm not a superhero. I don't take, you know, limitless pills or anything like that. Um, what else have they accused me of? I do sleep. And I did sleep today. I slept for like an hour. 30, 7, 30, 8, 32 hours. I slept for two hours today. Thank you. And see, it works. The two hour nap. I'm good. <laughs> no, I'm not. But, um... It's, it's nothing secret about it. It's just how I have come to work things out in my head and what I've used. In the past, I've used other methods. Uh, I used a lot of writing down. I used a lot of reminders. Um, but with Alexa and the, the digital calendar, and even my kids, they know they get digital uh, updates. They get digital. We I invite them to things and stuff like that. Like, if me and my daughter are doing something, I mean, even if it's just going to the Randazzles, which is a, 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 what is it, a fruit market, a fruit and vegetable market, I'm sending her a, a Google invite. If I say, okay, tomorrow morning we're going to Randazzles, she gets an invite and she knows that. She knows she's going to get a reminder about it because I need a reminder to remind me that we are supposed to be going there because I will forget. I will forget and everything like I do and you guys see how I write things down when I say okay let's do that and I'll write it down because that's what I do I try to in the prioritize section I try to do stuff as fast as possible and I actually taught my kids this because so when they get a homework assignment I used to tell them when you get a homework assignment and you got a free 10 minutes at lunchtime Get that homework assignment done because why wait till you get home to do it? You got chores to do. My clothes need washing. So you don't got time to be doing homework at all. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but I practice the same thing. I practice what I preach. If I get an assignment, I try to get it done like right away as fast as possible just to get it off my plate. So I'm not sitting up there trying. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and they did too. They got their homework done before they would get home. The majority of the time, unless it was a big project. But they see that I practice what I preach. Whenever I'm giving something to do, I try to get it done right away to get it off my plate. So then I'm like, hey, I'm all caught up. But like I said, I do. So number two in how I uh, stay, how I uh, work as an author, um, and when I say work, I mean that you've got to incorporate being an author and being everything else into your life. So a lot of these things that I do as an author, I'm also doing it in my home life. I'm doing it as a as as a woman. I'm doing it as a daughter, and I'm doing it as a mother. So number two, I parent myself. And I've talked about this a lot of times in our groups where you literally do have to parent yourself um, to do things. You have to give yourself rewards and punishments. You have to make notes like I do a lot of times. You have to keep yourself on schedule. So when you are prior to prioritizing yourself, you are telling yourself, I have to get this stuff done. And that's why the parent comes in. We get to 16, and for some reason, we can be 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and we still are saying the same thing we did at 16. I'm grown. We say it to everybody and including ourselves. So the things that we need to be doing for ourselves are the things that we should be doing for ourselves, and but the things we don't do for ourselves. So let me say that again. The things we need to be doing for the ourselves the thing are the things we should be doing for ourselves and the things we have to do for ourselves and we don't do those things we do everything else except those things that we have to do for ourselves to make ourselves happy to fulfill our our what we should be doing and to to bring peace into our lives so but we don't do them because we're grown so we need to sit down and parent ourselves, give ourselves, give ourselves rewards and punishments, 
and to keep on track by making notes even in my calendar here that I write in I'm still making notes about what I want and that's why I said I do enjoy this calendar and I got to start finding a new calendar actually for next year and I'm kind of dreading it because it does it helps me um, I have month goals of things I want to create I even have note areas on here and then I use kind of like the whole page of the calendar in order to to get my my stuff done so yeah that that makes it really important for me to see that this is things that I want to do this is what I desire to do and this is what I'm going to do so I'm constantly putting notes and stickers and things on there to make sure I get these things done now number three are processes like I have hinted before I am a little lazy I do procrastinate a little <laughs> and I love to watch movies I would love to just if I could have my dream life I would love to just sit in bed and watch Netflix and chill by myself <laughs> And it's so funny because I told my husband one day, I was like, you know what? I like being alone with you because if I didn't, you wouldn't be here. Because <laughs> I do. I'm just, he's so perfect. He'll just get in bed with me and do the same thing. Just lay there and we go watch movies all day long. We will be starving and just continuously find good movies to watch and just be like, are you hungry? I'm hungry. And then watch the movie because that's all we want to do. That's, that's why I'm just, I'm hoarding money to, so I can just sit in bed and then take my laptop out occasionally and type a book, put it back, and watch some more movies. That's all I want to do. Unfortunately, we need electricity to watch movies. So I have to work. <laughs> and I got to pay my Netflix bill. You know, and a prime bill. So those are very important. And of course, occasionally, like I said, we do want to eat. So I have to put things in place in order to force me to do the priorities and to parent myself. So um, like I explained my setup here, there are things around to remind me that I have to do things. So like I have the meeting chips to remind me I have to come up with stuff. Um, I have a whiteboard that like, and I'll take it out because I usually, oops, I usually don't move this. So sorry if you hear things drop. This is my stickers for my thing. See, I told you something was going to, oh, there's that thing. <laughs> you didn't see that? Okay, so I literally have this whiteboard and I, I make notes on my whiteboard next to me of things like big things that I have to do. And here is like when I make a blog, when I make a schedule, this is, that helps me remember that, you know, if I'm making a blog post for a feature or a post or something, I also have to send it out to my Gmail scheduled groups. And those are also hitting my Yahoo groups because I still send out stuff to my Yahoo groups. Um, I send out to MailChimp and I do my Facebook creators, my Hootsuite, my Buffer, and my Social Ump. So that tells me what I have to do every time I make a blog post. That tells me I have to do work. It makes it easy for me. And then when I make videos, I have a note automatically here that which I don't erase of, you know, where I can make videos, how I can make videos. I've even started making the videos for my audio, uh, my podcast, because I started a podcast. Yay me. And I'm sticking to it. Thank you. You can check me out on anchor.fm slash Sylvia Hubbard one. But I've been making an anchor video to go along to push it towards my YouTube and Instagram. So with that, I want to make sure I have a video there. First, I was doing it really hard. Um, and then also, I've put a goal in try to do animation 
as well. I used to do animation a lot when I was at uh, Specs Howard. I did animation a lot, and now I wanted to get back into animating. And I know you're like, Sylvia, why are you putting one more thing on your plate? Girl, you need to quit. That's what I'm talking to myself. That was me talking to myself. That's how I sound when I talk to myself. <laughs> but, um, so I put processes in place. Like, my whiteboard is here. And actually, I have I have bought... A, no, I'm not going to say bought. That, that's a lie. I stole it. I stole the whiteboard from my daughter. And it was so funny because we went shopping yesterday... And I was like, don't you need a whiteboard? And she was spending her money. I was like, don't you need a whiteboard? Because <laughs> I'm not giving her back this whiteboard. I'm actually going to put the whiteboard. I'm trying to see where I can put it in this area. Um, I have this huge drawer system right here on this side. And I think I might move it over because my husband did this... Uh, pantry clean out which i'm gonna take a picture of you guys so follow me on facebook because i'm gonna show you this guy it looks like i got a grocery store he took all my stuff that i homestead and he bought shelves because i was just throwing it in the pantry and it was like this mountain of stuff and so he bought shelves and so now my pantry looks like a grocery store god i love him boy i'm gonna keep this man forever but <laughs> I'm actually going to move this drawer system over so I can put my whiteboard up on the wall because it's actually a bigger whiteboard. And then I'm able to, uh, is that the keyboard I did? No, that's not. But uh, yeah, put it up on the wall so then I can also have it right in front of me. And this is just so I can just have reminders, not really for uh, doing quick notes, but just as reminders I can look up. And then if processes change, I can say that's different. So that's how I keep track of processes of things I need to do. So when I make good, when I make posts out, and this is what I do, I have to do to market. So I'll go to automatically open up those tabs and then put together the initial posts. That's how it's going to look on all the others. So that's one of my routines. Another one of my routines um, is uh, I have to learn things all the time. So to make sure I can stay up on stuff and learn things and to read my blogs, I literally have something that uh, keeps me up. So I have a, a YouTube playlist. It's a learning playlist. And whenever I sit down at my desk and I'm doing certain tasks, I can also learn things, which is why I have the second screen. So I can be doing my marketing or doing my um, updates on my blogs and everything or searching for something and I can be learning stuff so this is a process I've put into place of how I do it when I do my gardening or something around the house or um, things where I'm moving around that's why I keep my Kindle around and charged because I can actually or keep Alexa around and I can tell her play that audiobook or read this book for me and she literally does read books so she'll read fiction books because if you guys didn't know i made a i made a commitment another commitment so every sunday i do have to do a review for the the laughs and giggles podcast and i'm the read the i'm the read the book section so i have been doing this and sending audio audio to uh sean p to uh, do it. So I do audio from home. So to make sure I get that done, um, she'll read the book to me throughout the whole week or a little bit faster. And I have her on a high reading speed to get to grasp the book. And I have my mic right here where I can do it. So you like my really pink mic. It was really nice. This is actually only like, it was on sale for $20 on Amazon. It came even with this thing. So it's kind of good. Uh, I'll leave the link. I don't know if it's $20 still. But it's actually pretty good. It charges really fast. And it stays here. Is that kind of loose? Oh, I can stiffen that up, though. It's actually, yeah. So it's actually kind of cool. It actually works. It had a buzz in it at first, but I had to take it apart and I fixed it myself. I guess that's why it was $20. But I don't know if it all had a buzz because it. I don't know if it dropped in shipping because when we did get the box, it was kind of, like, bad. So whatever. I just fixed it myself and everything. That's from my Specs Howard training. Yeah. 
Don't ask. So, I, I, like I said, I am kind of lazy and I do stuff. So, that's why I do have things in place in order to make things happen. That's why I have a solar power battery, too, to make sure my phone stays charged when I'm sitting here at my desk. Because I don't want to plug it in and I want to be able to snatch things out right away. So, I literally keep this battery in the window and it'll just charge itself when it's not being used and then I can use it all the time because I don't have time to be running around charging my battery all the time. So I bought a solar power battery to kind of put it in place. Um, I get migraines a lot but I don't want that to stop me from doing what I have to do. It does stop me sometimes. It'll, it'll, it's like a brick wall sometimes. But I usually keep my migraine medicine here on my desk. I have a bottle here. I have a bottle everywhere literally of migraine medicine. So I have Excedrin in here. I have Excedrin in my bedroom. I have Excedrin in my kitchen. I have Excedrin in my car and I have Excedrin in my purse. Literally, because I, I don't want to be stopped by a migraine when I have things to do. But I do have things around me where I put things in place um, all around me. And I can like see, like, it's so, it's so many processes that I have, but this is to prevent laziness. I'm also a fan of post-it notes. So I, I love post-it notes. If you ever want to love me, give me post-it notes. <laughs> So, and that's what I do. I literally have post-it notes everywhere, stuck everywhere of, even like right here, I have how many books I need to buy, what brochures I need to make. Um, oh yeah, I do. Um, <laughs> I have things that, so there's always something for me to do, um, something for me as I'm telling you guys something, I'm like, okay, let me make a note of that. Literally, I'm putting it on post-it notes everywhere around the place and to remind myself this is the thing I have to do so this is how I stay as an author and prioritize I pray prioritize parent and I have processes so that's how I work as an author and the things that I'm telling you guys to do in your author promo challenge are processes that I'm trying to get you to put in place and this is a lot of alliteration processes that you need to put in place in order for you to work as an author and to incorporate this into your lives now the things are, are you're doing if you're new at it or you haven't done yes it's gonna take a little bit of time but once you start doing these processes that you're going to repeatedly keep doing um, it does become where you can do it in, in a smaller scale, you can do it faster, and then it doesn't take a lot of time, and then you're gonna see it does pay off. In the end, you're going to be fulfilling those three things that we talked about that needs to be done in order for this to work. So you're going to be build or strengthen your author platform, you wanna create readership and build search engine optimization, and you want to sell books those are the three things so that's why we have created this author challenge and with that I have gone 15 minutes over my time I want to thank you guys for joining me and I'm gonna see you guys next week as we do week four you're gonna put your assignments in the comments or I'm gonna also make a, of course a blog post about it but today the blog post will be just a little late because I'm going back to bed <laughs> Literally, because I was up all day yesterday, especially with the second Saturday. And I want to thank Monique Mensa for that awesome second Saturday. That was the bomb. If you didn't see it, please go back and watch it. She did three things. Uh, what is it? <laughs> I forgot it myself. <laughs> she did three things that uh, we do as self-publishers, mistakes we make as self-publishers awesome awesome presentation and she gave some great tips and tricks and you guys really have to go back and listen to that video but I want to do want to thank her for doing that and um, yes so we're gonna be doing it if you guys need more help or you're looking for more help you can always go to my Gumroad site and you can pick up the author planner say that you don't have your calendar or anything you can pick up your author planner and I said anybody who does complete the four week challenge by the end of the four weeks and shows me all their assignments on on the fifth week when we're having the summary 
um, gets a free one, but if you don't, you can get it at the Gumroad site, and I'll put that link in there. That's gumroad.com slash Sylvia Hubbard one, and it's actually a really good way for you to keep on track. See, I have the goals for the month, just like mine, um, the ones that I enjoy, dates to remember, and important notes, and I made this kind of like a, I wanted to make sure I had something that will remind me of things, and I use one of my own because then it helps me with my themes and topics and stuff that I want to do and it also helps me keep track because I have a checklist of like my self-publishing projects so I try to do two a year um, and so I try to divide my book up into two so my book is pretty messy that's why I don't bring mine out but <laughs> um, I have like work in progress to keep on track and everything and how I do my research and plot. So it starts from the beginning and it helps you write, publish, market, and promote your work as you are planning throughout the year, all throughout that book. So you guys can get your copies as well. I might on week four, if you guys join me, give out a discount code that'll be available maybe for about 10 people so it'll be 10 people get that discount code and you guys can go in and snatch it up <laughs> i want to thank you guys for the orders though that you guys have been sending i have gotten orders yesterday but i didn't go send them out because like i said yesterday was a busy day um but i am going to be sending out your orders monday morning so i will be sending those out oh yeah i do have a podcast tomorrow too so but I will be going to the post office early in the morning to ship out all you guys' packages. I want to thank you guys for your reader package orders and also your other orders for your author, uh, your writers. What is it? Your your plan prey. No, not the plan prey things. You guys ordered, like a whole bunch of you guys ordered that one. You guys ordered the author guide to writing, publishing, and marketing. So I want to thank you guys for that. Um, I am putting some more marketing books together and sending those out as well. And actually, when you do order that, you get the old marketing guides as well. So if you guys do the orders, and I'll do that until I run out as well. So I'm going to get out of here. Yep, that's all I'm going to get here. Oh, yeah, and I got some nice stuff to say next week. So we're going to be doing like a lot of promotion tips and stuff like that. So I'm really excited because I've been making my notes. I'm looking at all my notes like right here and I'm like, oh my God, I can't wait till next week. So you guys are going to be so enjoying me. I'm going to be so hyper. So look at us go. Look at us go. We're going to become authors sooner or later. So I want you guys to uh, thank you for joining me. I know I'm rambling now, but see you guys. See you later. Have a good Sunday. Um, and let me know if you guys need anything. If you guys have any more questions, please leave them in the comments or DM me. Yeah, I know. Don't slide into my DM. But you can slide into my DM because I'm giving you guys permission. Because I know you guys are members of the group. Those other DMs. And stop sending me those doggone videos. Okay, I'm going. <laughs> Bye, guys.